Now, I've got a confession to make. I've got more camera bags than my daughter has pairs of shoes. And if you knew my daughter, that means I'm addicted to camera bags. What I wanted to do in this video today is take you through my thoughts on camera bags. I'm gonna take you through what I've got in my camera bag and also Sarah will be taking you through what she's got in her camera bag. Now she has two completely different bags for what she does as a photographer. Me, I'm a little bit more simple, I just have the one. So this is my bag. This is the Donk F2 or Donkey F2 or Donkey F2. If anybody knows the correct pronunciation of Donk or Donkey, can you let me know in the comments? That would be wonderful. As somebody who's gone through their entire life having people mispronounce my surname, I hate it when I don't get surnames right. And obviously this is named after Jim Donk, the famous photojournalist. And I'd really like to know how you pronounce his surname. So if you could let me know, that'd be wonderful. This is a Donk F2. It's been around since the 1970s, I believe. At one time, it was the main bag for most photojournalists on the planet. I've had this camera bag since 2014, and I guess for the last five years or more, I've been using this as my main camera bag. A lot of camera bags are very good at one thing, which is transporting equipment from A to B. They tend to be very heavy because they're full of padding. One of the things you don't want when you're walking all day on the street is to have a camera bag which is heavy before you even put any gear inside it. And this is by far the lightest one for its size that I've ever come across. I like the way that it's secure on the front. These security clips are fantastic. Just clip clips down like this and nobody's gonna get into that bag. So if you've got it on your shoulder and you're in a crowd, nobody's gonna lift that flap and get whatever's inside your camera bag out. We'll start from the outside, it's probably the easiest way. Two end pockets, the amount of bags that don't have good end pockets, it's, I find it incredible. I don't think I've got any other bags that have decent end pockets. And these for me are an absolute must. You can just stuff things in there very quickly. We don't have to worry about opening the bag up to get things in and out. So end pockets, in there normally, water bottle. There's also usually, yeah, there is some sort of snack in there. Now, I haven't got the same quantity of snacks on me that Sarah has on her, but um, we, the odd bar gets uh, sort of hidden in there from time to time. On the other pocket, I have this little thing here. This is called a Montaigne Marathon. It's basically a waterproof jacket in a pouch. What I'll do with all the things that I'm showing you here, I'll leave a link to in the description below so you can see them in more detail. So this is basically a little waterproof jacket and it just comes out of a little pouch and then it just opens up to a big waterproof jacket. Okay, it's designed for runners. Okay, which I guess is why it's called a marathon. One of the problems in this country, especially in the northwest where we are, is we get a lot of rain. And rather than spending the entire day walking around in a raincoat, I can walk around and shoot in whatever I'm comfortable shooting in. And then if it does start to rain, I can just take this out and put this over the top of my clothes and I stay dry. And in the winter time, when it gets really cold, I'll take this out and put it over my coat and it adds like a, another layer and it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing to have. If you're gonna get something like this, make sure that it's always a couple of size bigger than what you are normally so that you can put it over the top of jackets and that kind of thing. Otherwise, you'll have to take something off to put this on and you don't really wanna do that. And along with that is just the, the normal SD cards that we carry. Excuse the Velcro. This is a Think Tank secure pixel pocket rocket for SD cards, a lot of card wallets they're not secure like this and you can end up losing your cards out of the wallet but this has got zips to make sure everything's secure so that just sits in the back of the pocket here okay let's move this out of the way okay so inside we'll just tip this up the camera will pick this up so basically in the f2 you have this compartment with four dividers in it and that the either end are just empty spaces it's padded at the bottom but it's not padded on the sides in the bag at either end we have a camera this is Leica M9 uh, with a 35 millimeter lens on it and at the other end of the bag we have my main camera which is a like another Leica M9 an M9P in this case um, with a 28 millimeter on it and I can go all day with these two cameras I have a spare camera and two lenses in effect most of the time one of the cameras will stay in the bag it's rare for me to actually have both cameras out at the same time but when I do have both cameras out at the same time I have different straps on them so this strap can go over my shoulder and then this strap can go over my neck and uh, so I can keep the cameras separate from each other. In the front compartments, we have all the batteries. The compartment next to it in the front here has cleaning cloths. If you're a Leica M user, you'll know 
how important cleaning cloths are for keeping the rangefinder glass clean and the eyepieces clean and so on. And also in the front compartment, I have some earplugs and a pen knife. You might think, what does a street photographer want with earplugs? If you're shooting fun fairs, which we do a lot, especially during the uh, summer season, you can get very loud. If you're standing next to a ride that's got really loud music, it can get really loud. You know, I don't really want to have too much tinnitus as I'm getting older. So these are, these are Alpine um, earplugs, they're concert earplugs, very, very good. And again, I'll leave a link below to, to all this stuff so you can see what it's like. In the main compartment, spare glasses, very important. GoPro, sometimes they can be very useful just to record scenes and so on, even if I'm not actually recording a YouTube video so that I've got something in a library. So the GoPro is quite a, a cool piece of kit. The trouble is with the GoPro, it needs batteries. We have GoPro batteries and we also have a GoPro double charger here. Um, GoPro batteries, particularly if you shoot in 4K, don't last very long. So what I end up doing is taking a dead battery out putting it into the battery charger and then hooking that battery charger up to um, an anchor power bank, which is what this is. Okay, so it's a USB power bank and this will charge the batteries while they're in my bag. If my bag was small and it was packed to the rafters with stuff, I wouldn't be able to do that because there'd be no room for it. Okay, so what else we got in here? Blower brush. I uh, tend to use this mainly at the beach to blow away all the, the sand from the camera lenses and so on. You don't want to be using cloths near a beach to clean your camera. You'll just end up scratching things. In the top here, we have another compartment. And in here we have band-aids, plasters, whatever you want to call it. And I've also got some painkillers, um, what's these? Diarrhea relief, these diarrhea relief, these tablets. And there's only two left, which is a bit worrying. Now, just because I've got this bag and I found this bag and it works for me, and Sarah has the uh, the green version, which you'll see later on in the video, doesn't always mean they're gonna work for somebody else. And I honestly believe, and it's the reason why I've got so many bags that I've accumulated over the years, your body shape, how tall you are, how broad your shoulders are, you know, how strong your back is, you know, all that kind of stuff contributes to how comfortable the bag feels on your body. So a bag like this is really comfortable for me to use, but Sarah can't use it for long periods of time. She uses a backpack for out on the street. I can't use a backpack. A backpack is really frustrating for me to use. A backpack is something that feels like, like I'm being suffocated sometimes a little bit. Maybe it's because I've got um, bigger shoulders. I'm bigger at the top here um, than I am. I can't say down below, can I? but I'm bigger at the top here. And a, a shoulder bag tends to fit my kind of body shape here a lot better than say a, a rucksack does. I also wear this across my body. I find that far more comfortable than having it on my shoulder. I think it's possibly the best bang for buck bag out there on the market at the moment. But like I say, if you're somebody that's really obsessed over making sure your gear stays in the absolute best condition it can, this probably isn't gonna be the bag for you simply because it doesn't have the internal padding. Now you can put padding into it, that kind of defeats the object of, of what it is that you're trying to do with the bag in the first place. Today um, I'm gonna show you two of my, my only two bags that I take on um, my project and on the street. Um, I have two different bags for two very different jobs as far as I'm concerned really. This is my project bag which is the main bag I'm using at the moment because obviously it's January and um, the street is really mainly weekends, there's not a lot happening in the week so um, I do shoot absolutely every day so this is the one that's being used all the time at the moment. Um, so I'll start from the outside and work in. This is probably other than my camera, one of the most important things that I take out on my projects. Um, it's a magazine that I produced myself. Jeff produced it for me actually. But it basically has quite a lot of photographs in it that I've taken from various projects. When I go on my projects, I cold call. Um, so basically I find something on the internet or in local paper, free ads, um, that I'd like to go and photograph or part of a project. And rather than call in advance, I just turn up. It tends to work for me, but it helps to be able to show people the sort of work that I do. It um, gives them a bit of confidence. If I like you, I leave one with you. If I don't like you, I don't. So if you haven't had one, probably didn't like you. Bravo, very important. Um, and then a notepad and pen to basically write down all the people that I meet, names, details. I'm really old fashioned about it. So the last thing you want to do is to get past the door, meet everyone and then immediately forget their names. And I'm really bad at that. So I, I write them down. Oh, only for ladies. Anybody of a certain age will remember that. Covid basically meant that you have to have hand sanitizer. 
Lots of tissues. Um, public toilets are done with a blue roll. Oh, more, more, more sweets. Then I've got earplugs, which are more important than you realise. I've photographed a lot of people singing, so I find them very handy because uh, they're not always good at it. Some key rings bought by my mum for me. Spot meter. I found, especially of this most recent project, um, I'm doing uh, women in sport. So it's a lot of gyms and they tend to paint the walls black. So I've had to adapt and I use a spot meter. So, and actually I, I really like it. And I like to wear it around my neck like a, you know, like it makes me important. Um, business cards. If you're going to meet people, you want them to remember who you are, even if it takes a pad for you to remember who they are. Purse, if I have to pay for my own coffee and tea, which doesn't happen very often. Some change for toilets. Card for petrol. Recycled uh, rubber bag that holds all my spare batteries in there and probably more than my fair share of batteries because I don't tend to nick them off deck if I can. Um, and then I also have a battery pack. I have my little charger which will go into the battery pack which will charge uh, like the batteries which uh, is fantastic as well. I also have some cards which anybody who's ever seen me do a talk will realise I once went on a job without any so I don't make that same mistake again. Then the two most important things that uh, I have obviously are my cameras. This is my monochrome with a 28mm on it. A top viewfinder which I always use because I'm a lefty and if you put your left eye to the camera and then look through obviously the camera blocks your right eye so you can't see what's happening so I, I prefer to use the top which is a bit of a something you have to get used to but I can't do about it. I've got another monochrome which actually nicked off Jeff which I always have for my project second camera because obviously you don't want to go to all the trouble of getting past the door and then you can't uh, photograph because something's happened to your camera and that did unfortunately happen on one of my projects we ended up with a broken camera. This one's got the 21 which I also stole off Jeff uh, which I absolutely love at the moment. He's got zero chance of probably getting that one back. Yellow filters is from when we've been shooting on, this, on the front, but I'm too lazy to take them off. And I think, oh, and obviously in the top is basically my first aid. So all tablets, dry eye, because I suffer, I suffer with dry eye, and a spare battery for my um, light meter. And I think that's, that's pretty much it. This is my second bag, this is my street bag. It really pretty much contains the duplicates of my other bag, which I absolutely love my other bag, but I found that across the shoulder uh, bag was really uncomfortable for a long time, uh, probably because uh, I'm a woman and ladies will understand that. I prefer the backpack, which is much more comfy. I've tried lots of bags and at the moment this, this is favorite. The camera's loaded on the front of the rucksack, which is quite handy. It's quicker to get it in and out. Obviously, if you're going to go in um, on your cafe stops, it's, uh, I like to be able to put it away rather than put it on the table because it's safer, so put it in there. Um, I like the drink, but the bottle on the side, except for it's quite, it seems to be quite stiff to try and get it out of when it's actually on your back. Um, I prefer to make it a little easier. Um, it's double, it's zipped and covered over, so it's, it keeps the water out. Pretty much exactly the same as what I already have in my other bag, minus the extra camera. Um, and I have a, a waterproof in there. The rest is, is the same. Oh, and, and a GoPro, obviously, for when we're doing the POV out in the street. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and we'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. Um, as I've said before in other videos, subscribing helps the channel in a huge number of ways and it makes sure that we continue to make videos like this one. And if you have any questions, um, any comments about bags, what bag are you using at the moment? Which bags have you found to be the best bags for street photography? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.